All right, we're pleased to be joined on the Ray and Dregs Hockey Podcast by Corey Perry of the Tampa Bay Lightning. And uh, Pairs, we'll get to the legendary 408th goal of your oh, yeah. NHL career in just a moment and explain why it was so legendary and why it matters to us so much here on the pod. Um, but why don't you take us back to last night as we record this here on Friday, the Thursday win and Steven Stamkos recording his 1,000th NHL point. I mean, one of those enormous milestone moments, but it was so fun for us as, as fans to be welcomed into the room, right? We saw the celebration. We saw the puck being delivered from Coop to uh, Victor Hedman to uh, to Stammer and then Stamkos crushing a Bud Light in celebration. So what was that entire moment like? It was pretty special. Um, obviously, he came into this league and, um, you know, started off uh, scoring goals and and he hasn't stopped and uh yeah. you know to be i've been a part of a, a few big milestones in, in my career um you know with with tamo scoring his 600th goal to yeah. thousand points to um you know just different things but you know last night uh you know we were, we were driving to the we we're in an uber to the game together and um my my kid was on the on the phone and he said well tell stammer uh, good luck to a thousand points and you know he, and Stammer was right there and I'm like well, well you can just tell him yourself so it's those little things that uh, that that you're a part of is is pretty cool but the moment uh, you know after the game you know he said a, a tremendous little two-minute speech uh, when he got the puck and um, and then him you know like you said crushing the Bud Light that's uh, that's kind of <laughs> what uh, that dressing is all about it's just uh, fun and family. You've been there a couple of years now um what was it like coming into that group? Like they're, uh, they've been together so long. A lot of those guys, like, you know, they, they grew up together. Most of them in the American league, of course, Stammer and Hedman not, but, and then you just, you come into that. Did you, did you take a back seat or were you just kind of, I've been around long enough and I can just fit in. Um, a little bit of both, but they, they're the group, the whole group is so, you know, inviting. And, and I've said this since day one, when I got here, it's, um, you know, when you first come into this, into this team, you know, there's, there's so many kids and, you know, I have a kid myself and, um, uh, you know, there's birthday parties, there's Thanksgiving dinners, there's, you know, it was, it was right from the start and it, it just never stopped. And, and that's what this group's all about is, is, um, uh, you know, being, being a big, huge family and, and everybody's invited. When, um, when you left Anaheim and went to, to Dallas, I mean, it's four years ago. It's hard to believe, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> um, did you have, did you have any plan of what, how long you were going to play or did you just want to get to the next year or, I mean, you'd been in Anaheim forever. Yeah. Um, I didn't know where my career was going to take me, you know, um, it was, you know, to, to be bought out, it was kind of a, you know, a shock to the system and it it was probably you know the best thing for me and uh you know revitalizing my career and uh, you know i took it and, and ran with it and and you know just kind of use it as a positive and you know i'm just taking it uh, day by day game by game and and see where this thing ends uh, you know I, I feel like i still have lots of hockey left in me and uh, you know i think i i told my agent that uh at 16 17 that uh, i wanted to play till i was 40 so no, who, who knows? It's, uh, you know, if it's uh, 40, 42, 44, you know, who knows? I, uh, I was telling Dregs uh, this morning, um, you know, I've got to do a lot of your games over the last couple of years. And <laughs> it is it is amazing to me how many times like the whistle will blow and, you know, the play has gone up the ice and I turn around to look and there's this mess around the goal crease. <laughs> and you're you're always kind of you know, accidentally in there sort of thing. Like, was that back to junior or? Did you like you always play in the front of the net, but like you're always in the the mess. Is that just where you have to play? I mean, that's I love just, it. I think it's awesome. I think it's hilarious. Actually. That's just who I am. I don't know. It's um, you know, you, you guys you kind of get, get to know me, you know, away from the rink a little bit, just uh, yeah. you know, talking to you guys, but and you know, I'm a quieter guy, you know, just kind of do my own thing. But you know, when I get to the rink, man, it uh the flip switches and and it's game on and I'll do anything to, you know, to get that extra inch to, um, you know, to, to score a goal or, you know, helping the team win. I just, 
that's all I want to do is, is win a, win hockey games and, uh, and win championships. Without, uh, without talking about other coaches, you're, you're playing for a guy that's going to end up in the hall of fame uh, right now. in John Cooper, what makes him the right guy for this team or what makes him such a great coach? He certainly appears to have his finger on just about everything. He does. Um, you can see, you know, why they've, what, what, what they've done and, and why they've done it. And, you know, he's a big, big part of it. He, uh, he definitely, you know, he has control of the room, but he also lets, lets the guys play and, and lets the guys figure it out. Um, you know, some nights he, after, if we have a, a tough period, he'll come in, he'll, he'll tell Stammer, you guys got this. And he won't even come back in the room. He'll let us figure it out. And, you know, just those little things, um, uh, you know, that, that he trusts his players and, uh, and, you know, it definitely, it go, it's a two way street. How hard is it? Um, I'm always interested in this. Like I, I only got to the semifinals once and it seemed like the Holy crap training camp started like three minutes later. And, you know, you guys have been doing this now. I mean, Tampa longer than you, but um, you know, and then you get there, you've got the short rewind, you got to reload is how difficult to get to the level you got to be at and then the season's already started I, you know I did you guys early and it felt like you were sort of almost there but not quite mm. kind of there does that yeah it's sort of what it feels like it, it, it did um it, you go through the whole season and you know the summers get shorter um mm. you know there's only a few weeks to work out and some guys are working out for for 10 12 14 weeks and I got five weeks last year. That's all I got. Um, I took three weeks off. I was, you know, a little banged up. So let the body recover. And, and then I worked out for five weeks and wow. back on the ice and back at training camp. And it's, uh, you know, it's a quick turnaround. So it, it does take a little bit of you. But, you know, once you start going and, and get going again and, and start, start to figure out that, you know, this is what we do, do for a living. And this is fun. And, and uh, if you want to win, you, you just put all that behind you and you just go play hockey. How much yeah. do you hate your skates? The look at them in five weeks. Like, I can't even imagine. <laughs> it's uh, it's tough. I, I throw it in. I throw it in the basement in, the, in one of the uh, spare bedrooms and, and just let the equipment sit there. So I, I I don't I shut the door and I don't look at it until I need to uh, I need to go back out and on the ice and, and get ready. You, you know, Corey, to Ray's point though, I mean those long playoff runs have pretty much been in your DNA from the moment you stepped into the National Hockey League. I know you take great pride in winning the Stanley Cup in Anaheim. You're probably not going to take a ton of credit from that point moving forward, although you deserve it. But do you do you take a great sense of pride in the fact that on all of those long playoff drives, you've been and continue to be a key ingredient to that? I, I take big pride in that. Um, and that, I think that comes back down to know wanting my character on the ice and you know the way I play um, and I just I just want to win and I remember going going through all these the, the free agency stuff and you know you can go here you can go here but I just uh, I, I picked I picked here because I wanted to win and um, you know you, you can see that uh, that this is a spot you, you can you can win championships year after year because you're going to do everything you can to to do that and um, you know it's for me I just like I said I just go out there I, I play the way I play and uh, I let the chips fall where they fall and uh, you know have fun with it for for a goal scorer um, you got to be you got to be with the right guys too and so you mm -hmm. break in and in Anaheim and you and Ryan Getzlaff are tied at the hip yeah. and like that's pretty fortunate and like did you know right away oh man this is going to work or did it take a little bit of time? Cause it looked like it wasn't really much adjustment at all. <laughs> it, there was uh, really no adjustment. There was, we had the, I think it was a second rookie tournament we had, we had the lockout rookie tournament and the lockout happened. So we never, never saw each other until the following rookie camp. And, um, and it just took off from there. And, uh, and I think from, from that day on, I don't think we played too many, too many games away from each other. And, uh, uh, or on different lines and it definitely worked I mean he's he's going to be a hall of famer um, and just the the way he could see the ice the way he could pass and uh, use his frame to protect pucks and 
made my job a lot easier. I'll just go in the front of the net and he'll pass to me and I'll just he'll, you know, he'll hit, hit, hit it off my shin pad or you know, find my <laughs> stick somehow and and uh, and away we go. So it's uh, it, it definitely worked. Um, Corey, when you, when you look past, you joked a little bit about playing into your forties, right? I mean, you got another year left on your contract. You're 37. I mean, it's not inconceivable that you, you get there, although it seems like a long way from now. Have you given any thought as to what might be next beyond your, your playing future? I mean, do you, you seem like a guy because hockey again is so much ingrained in who you are. It's in your blood. You seem like somebody who'd want to be involved in the sport after your playing days. You know, have you allowed yourself to think in that way at this stage? A little bit. Obviously, you know, you have to start thinking about it. I don't want to think about yeah. it too much. I want to keep playing. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I I will still stay involved somehow, whether it's, uh, you know, getting to junior hockey back home or, you know, being, being a, a coach or, you know, I'll do something. And, but I also want to see my kid grow up a little bit as well. So, um, you know, there's, uh, there's lots of time before then. So we'll just, we'll just yeah. wait and, and see, but, uh, yeah, there will be something and I, I won't, I won't leave the game. Um, totally. It's uh, just not who I am. And it's, uh, it, like you said, it is ingrained in me and it's, uh, it's going to stay with me forever. Okay. Hold on. Now, Ray doesn't want us to talk about this, but really it's, it's a big part of the reason why we brought you on the podcast today. And I, I don't know if you knew, yeah. Uh, I, did oh, I you know him. that I, told well, I, did, I, <laughs> I was going to get him to tell the story? Yes. But I was going to ask if he knew that 408 <laughs> would at least put him on the dotted line equal of Ray Ferrero before Ray told you, were you aware of where you're, where your position was on the all-time scoring list? I had no idea until he told me uh, <laughs> that morning. Um, I knew I was I was getting close to the hundred mark and and going that way. And um, but yeah, I had no idea. And he, he just kind of pulled me aside and whispered in my ear, saying, "Saying, hey, you, you do this, you <laughs> you tie me." So and down um, I go, down again, <laughs> down the list to go again. <laughs> But, you know, it was, uh, those, those are special moments. Um, you know, it's it, it, for, for somebody like Ray to, to say that to you and, and, and know where he stood and, and, and what's, what's coming, and, you know, right behind him. It's, uh, that's a pretty cool, cool moment. I was looking towards the end of last year, and, you know, uh, there was some talk Bergeron may retire. There was, you know, Zach Parisi's <laughs> getting near the, you know, near the back, back couple of holes yourselves there. And I'm like, man, maybe these guys will retire. And if they retire, then I can still hang on. But as of right now, I did check and I told Dregs this too, because of alphabetical order, you're, you still need one more. You're still, you'll still list it behind me. So I'm going <laughs> to hang on as long as I can. Well, I guess we'll have, we'll have to do this the next uh, after I step <laughs> uh parents we'll let you go with this here quickly um just looking ahead you know we're recording again on friday you've got the leafs on saturday toronto maple leafs fan base always makes a big deal when there's that head-to-head -head between toronto and and tampa bay for obvious reasons um how do you guys and how does an ontario veteran like yourself i mean is this just another game in a long 82 game regular season schedule or do you look at the Bostons, you look at the Torontos, you look at the top teams in the National Hockey League, particularly in the East, and realize that, all right, this is a team that we're going to have to beat in the regular mm -hmm. season and maybe in the playoffs? It, it, it's exactly um, – I, I, I mean, being from Ontario and being from around Toronto, it's, it, it, it's a big deal, especially when, when we go there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you have family and friends and um, – you know, so it's a, uh, it's a big deal. when when we go there, but, you know, being here, we're, we're looking at as, you know, it's going to be a good, a good, you know, benchmark to see where we really are. Um, you know, we had Boston twice in the last couple of days or last, last week or two. And, um, yeah. you know, I thought the other night we, we played, played a, a, a decent game against them and, um, you know, we just, we couldn't find a way to score a goal, but uh, you know, those things happen, but we, we knew where, where we stand and, you know, playing Toronto for the first time here is is going to be another good uh, a good stepping stone and a good benchmark for us to to see how we how we can do against you know 
bigger teams and, and teams that are, are contending for Stanley Cup. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see after tomorrow night and, uh, and we can talk mm-hmm. about them. Looks like another lousy day in Tampa. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's not very nice. Though. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> We're sitting here and it's snowed in Vancouver. Drake's is up to his ass in snow. And I'm like, I look out there, I'm like, <laughs> not so bad. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, shorts and a t-shirt weather again. It's, uh, <laughs> Yeah, can play stuff, play that. enjoy well, awesome. it man um, thanks for your time Corey. i really appreciate it no problem thanks for having me guys appreciate yeah it. we'll we'll celebrate 409 well some of us will i'm not sure ray will but we'll we'll celebrate with you and you jam in 409 thanks Corey. thanks guys thanks for having me good talking to you